Hi everyone, welcome. Thank you for joining CGAP today for the data analysis journey. My name is Kay. We will start from the very beginning, requirement gathering, taking you all the way to publishing your reports. So let's get started. We use the term data analysis journey to refer to the process that a data analyst goes through to create dashboards and surface key data insights. It begins with a stage where we gather the requirements and ends with a stage where we set the data reference schedule on the dashboard we created. In this video, I'll be taking you through the critical stages for creating dashboards and offering key takeaways. You will learn how to do requirements gathering, how to triangulate available data, tips and tricks for query preparation and visualizations, how to validate your data. We will also talk about deploying and publishing your reports so that you can extract relevant data that provides maximum value to your business. We start by gathering our requirements. Let's say the management or the business owners have approached the data analyst asking for the dashboards or data reports. There are three questions that the data analyst need to get the answers for. The first question is, what is the business problem that we are trying to solve? The best scenario is that the business owner includes the data analyst in the brainstorming session to craft the business problem together. The second and third question to answer is, what data points are needed to complete the report and what data is available. The answer to this question will help the team to balance between the two extreme options in case the required data is not available. The first option is to wait until all the data points are available. Of course, that is if the business owner agrees to the time frame. However, in case of the time pressure, the data analyst may need to suggest replacing missing data points with readily available data. For example, providing six months worth of data rather than a full year's worth. Make sure that the management treats the data analysis journey as a journey of transformation. There will always be more databases to integrate, more data points to be cleansed and added to the visualization. Here are the key takeaways for the requirements gathering stage. It is possible that the data analyst may need to start from square one if they find any significant roadblocks in the following stages of the data analysis journey. It is also possible to come back to the requirements gathering stage if the key stakeholder thinks it is necessary to make the current dashboard more granular. Confirm the format of the report, the delivery method, and the frequency of refreshing the report. Although they may change at a later point, having a sense of those details will help prepare the data analyst for query preparation stage. For example, dashboards that make use of machine learning will be best deployed using Python, while straightforward KPIs like acquisition and chain rate can be prepared using SQL or Microsoft Excel. The next step in the journey is assessing the data availability. In this stage, the data analyst makes sure that the data points required are in the data warehouse. We will use the process flowchart to guide us through the questions that we need to get the answers for. The first question is to ask if we have got all the needed data points. If the answer is yes, we straight away proceed to the next stage, which is the query preparation stage. If the answer is no, we can ask another question. Do we have replaceable data points readily available? If the answer is yes, we communicate the changes to the business owners get the confirmation and proceed to the next stage. However, if the answer is no, we need to go back to the requirements gathering stage. Here is the key takeaway for the data availability stage. It's the best practice to maintain a data dictionary. Not only it helps tremendously when talking to pretty much anyone who needs to use the data, internal, external, technical, or non-technical. It will add as a live document that the data analyst can always refer to. In simplified format, here is what a data dictionary looks like. Next, we will be preparing the queries. This is the most technical step in the journey. At this stage, the data analyst prepares the queries or writes the code for the data extraction. We will now go through the popular tools to prepare queries. SQL is the language of the data analyst. It's the most common language for data extraction and data manipulation. In recent years, Python and R have been rising in popularity amongst those in the data analytics field, especially for its capability for machine learning and statistical analysis. Some visualization tools like Power BI are also equipped with powerful data cleaning functions. Finally, we can always fall back to Microsoft Excel. In fact, the recent functions that are made available to Microsoft Excel are transferred from Microsoft Power BI, which allow the users to clean the data effortlessly. 
Here are the key takeaways for this stage. The data analysts should be able to involve more on the adoption of the new data infrastructure. It is critical to strike the delicate balance between the two scenarios. One is being locked in the ecosystem such as Oracle, Microsoft, etc. This could impact negatively during the pricing negotiation. The second scenario is the lack of synergy of different databases and data tools. This could cause the data analysts difficulty in providing the accurate data when the data is scattered in different databases with very different data infrastructure. A data warehouse should be able to house different databases. For example, call backing system, card management system, mobile application data. All of these databases should be accessible through the analytics layer of the data warehouse. It is important to establish the feedback loop between the data team and the product team. For example, when the data for the column, how long have you been working for the current company is extremely messy and disorganized, the data analyst can report the finding to the product owner. Then, the product owner can recommend the development team to change the input type to be numerical only for this particular column, limiting the user to only put numerical values. This step, I would say, is the most colorful step in the journey. We will be visualizing the data. This is the stage where we begin to see the findings from the queries you have created in charts and graphs. Visualization tools vary according to the software of choice. Microsoft Power BI is one of the visualization software that the data analysts these days are most familiar with. Tableau is another popular choice. It allows the users to create more advanced visuals such as a Sankey chart or a Sundial chart. Another well-known visualization tool is Google Data Studio. A lot of data analysts prefer this for its easy connection to the web-based Python notebook called Colab. Another popular option is Quirk. If all the above data visualization tools are not available, then we can always fall back to the insert chart function of Microsoft Excel and Microsoft PowerPoint. Make sure your visuals represent an unbiased reflection of the report. It's easy to fall under the spell of the best looking performance graph to please the stakeholders. But always remember to stay true to the data. Next, we will do a quick overview of which visuals to use and when. Pie charts and donut charts can be used to present numerical proportion. For example, the distribution of total revenue by the product or the distribution of the population by age group. Bar charts are used to compare the figures across different categories. We normally use for time series comparison. For example, monthly revenue of the past six months. Line charts are particularly useful when comparing the data against different categories over time. A stack bar chart is used to compare different categories within a total figure. The 100% stack bar chart is very similar to a stack bar chart, but the 100% stack bar chart describes the figures as a percentage, whereas the stack bar chart depicts absolute values. Let's go over some do's and don'ts for visualizations. Always put a title on the chart so that the audience know what to expect from your visual. Label the excess at all times unless the ASIC is self-explanatory such as the date. This allows the audience to understand if the data analyst used average deposit balance or total deposit balance for the graph. Use a label rather than a legend whenever possible. Stick to the consistent use of colors to help the audience read through the different charts in the same dashboard quicker. Use the footnotes to explain the definitions, assumptions, and key insights to help the audience to understand the numbers better. Next, it's time to communicate and get the validation. This is a stage where key stakeholders are invited to give feedback. Let's go straight to the key takeaways. Start with a small group. If the product owner requested the data, invite that person to provide the feedback first and expand to a bigger group later. Walk them through the steps you took, definitions, assumptions, and key insights. Make sure there are no surprises. This can take a lot of time to complete when there are concerns about data validity. It might be issues with data migration and clean data or missing data. In those cases, the data analyst goes back to the second stage of the journey the data availability stage, and reassess the data available. If there are no concerns from the stakeholders about definitions, assumptions, and data integrity, we move on to the next stage. When the two teams come together, there may be a gap in understanding of the context. The business owners may need time to absorb and interpret the analysis and the visualization. 
there can be a lot of back and forth between the two teams during the process where data irregularities are discovered and corrected. It's all part of a healthy exercise in building the rapport between the two teams. The next stage is deployment. This is a stage where the report is deployed into production and becomes a tool for monitoring customer behavior. This is one of the most important steps in the journey where the dashboard and the report find their stakeholders and the purpose. Let's look at key takeaways. Now that the dashboards are ready to deploy, the data analyst confirms the information gathered in the requirements gathering stage. It might involve some changes. For example, a report that was requested to be refreshed every month might change into a daily report because some critical information was discovered and required to be monitored daily. Make sure the business owner understands that depending on the technology choice, the level of effort involved in refreshing data will vary. The more manual intervention, the greater the chance of human errors. Once you have confirmed the frequency of the report refresh, add a full note on how often the report is to be refreshed and on what day and time. Next stage is publishing. This is a stage where you invite a bigger group to discuss the report. It's likely that this will involve senior management so that they can discuss how the content of the report can impact the strategic direction. It's important to decide how the data visualization will be communicated to a larger audience. There are a couple of different approaches we can choose for publishing the report. If it's in a presentation format delivered in a meeting, the data analyst can choose to go heavy on charts and graphs as it will be presented verbally. However, if it's the report format, it's important to include the key insights, definitions, and assumptions so that the report will be self-sufficient without any verbal explanation or presentation. It's also possible that interesting KPIs in the dashboards are picked to present to the board or similar stakeholders. In those cases, it's possible that the data analyst needs to adapt the visual to fit the overall tone of the presentation. That's it. We have made it from A to Z in our data analytics journey. And I'd like to leave you with a few final takeaways. The data team needs to understand what kind of problem the business team is trying to solve. And the product team needs to have visibility into which of their products have impact on the data integrity. And also what kind of constraints the products have caused the data team. When management starts to ask the product owners, where is the data that backs up their assumption? The product owners will start to realize the need for data. They then ask, where is the data? And start looking for it. That is when data-oriented problem solving begins to permeate the organization. So you really need management to lead on making that happen. New products mean new data. And the new data pipelines will be required to accommodate new data. Unless those pipelines are prepared before the product launch, there is no way to monitor the new product's performance from its launch. So bring in the data team from the beginning as part of planning new products. So there you are. I hope you have enjoyed our journey. We started with requirements gathering on through triangulating available data to how to create queries, visualizations, and how to validate your data. We have talked about deploying your reports and finally publishing your reports. All this will help you to extract relevant data that will add value to your business and help you make good decisions. And don't forget, data analysis isn't just about a lone analyst walking away in their caves. It means creating a data-oriented organization throughout. It means learning to work with various teams whose starting points may be different. I can't stress enough on how important it is to learn to communicate well within the organization and to work together to get the best outcome. Good luck on your data analysis journey. For more information, please visit tcap.org.